Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Let's take a look at how to use the new WMS capability from Manifold Server. And uh, we're looking at a Microsoft Bing browser here, excuse me, an Edge browser. And uh, this is the What's New page from the, on the Manifold Net website. It shows the uh, sample website here that uh, uh, generates a Manifold Server page. That is a Manifold Server page. And let's reposition this a bit so we can see the whole website. Uh, and uh, first we're going to take a quick refresher as to what a uh, server does. As you know, server can publish a Manifold project and automatically create a website si site without any programming. And uh, it adds these uh, typical buttons to the user interface. For example, a location button to zoom to Egypt. There's that cool eclipse on 2027. Uh, that'll cross over Luxor, the longest duration eclipse in the next, I think, 80 years, something like that. And uh, then here's the one in the United States that'll happen next year, 2024 in April and so on and so forth and uh, this is a typical website created with Manifold Server. What's new is that when you create a website in Manifold Server now it automatically creates a WMS capability for that web, web server, website so that you can connect to that website using a WMS client uh, using OGC WMS protocol and uh, to use that in a WMS client is really easy. All you do is you just take the URL here I highlighted that I'm going to click Control C to copy that now I'll move this out of the way. And here's a Manifold Release 9 session. We'll use that as a, uh, a WMS client. You can use any WMS client. To uh, create a uh, WMS data source connection in uh, Manifold 9, you choose Create, New Data Source, and then click More here. And let's give this a name, WMS Example. And uh, in the type box from all this long list of things that uh, you can create, uh, data source you can create in, with Release 9, we're going to choose Web Server WMS. And here for the source URL, I'll uh, enter that uh, URL, which is just the URL to the regular page that we want, and we just add WMS to it. It's that simple. In fact, if you want to test to see if that works, I'll click the Browse button and choose the test, and bang, it connects instantly. Okay, so click OK there, and now cl click Create Data Source, and it's that simple. That's all you need to do. In less than two minutes, we've learned how to use WMS from uh, the uh, Manifold web server. So let's go into it and, uh, and uh, see what, what that actually produces. As we expand that data source, we can click open the map image. And uh, there's the data, there's the image that a web server produces. What does a web server do? Web server takes everything except the uh, so-called default layers, for example, the background layer here, uh, excuse me, virtual layers, and it generates uh, the equivalent of that in a WMS image using PNG, pink, as the uh, image uh, type and uh, it, it, it uses a blank background. So if you look at the layers page here and we turn the background off, you can see that's what it's basically doing is it's showing the various vector layers uh, that, that were created as part of that uh, image server page. But where the, uh, but it's using a ping with transparency. So where there aren't any objects that are part of the web page, uh, it, uh, it just does a transparency. Let's zoom in here and so you can see how it's turning layers on and off for us automatically. For example, it's turning on with more towns. You zoom in even further and it'll start turning on uh, roads. There we go. You can see all that. Uh, if we want the background uh, image color to match what we used in the uh, map, we can just uh, double click on that, choose color picker, and then off offset, I'm going to choose the color blue that was used for the, uh, for the uh, uh, web server page. And now you can see that basically replicates the uh, web server page as a WMS data source. So uh, that's really all that, that there is to it, and it's, uh, it's uh, that simple. We can do a few variations on this. Uh, people sometimes ask, uh, well, when I'm connecting to a uh, web server, uh, there's all this uh, other parts of the string, for example, uh, question mark request equal get capabilities and all that. So let's see how that might work. I'll go back here to the URL. Let's copy that URL, URL again. Okay, and uh, let's go back here and we'll create another example. Create a new data source, more, uh, longer, WMS example. Let's spell that right, just for style points. All right, and here what I'll do is uh, uh, add WMS to that as we did before. And uh, uh, let's add, I'm copying this from off screen from uh, a different web page. And we'll add this bit, a question mark request equal get, cap get capabilities and service equal WMS. I'll go into the uh, web login page and, so I can use the test button. And let's see, does that test okay? Yeah, sure, it tests okay. Connections established. This uh, stuff is basically salad dressing that you don't really need to use when you're using Manifold as a client. But if you add that, it's not going to hurt anything. And uh, the WMS capability in server will respond correctly to such requests, get capabilities. It, it does the, I forget which one, the OGC, whatever, uh, 
uh, level of service, but uh, it will do all that. So let's create the j data source, and we can now verify that this one also, the map inch from the longer data source, that also responds exactly the way you expect. And let's uh, turn off the background so you can see, you know, what's going on was doing this. You might ask yourself, uh, all right, is uh, all this stuff uh, correctly georeferenced? And the answer is yes, of course it is. So I'm going to close these two guys here and uh, let's pick one of them uh, from the project pane. Uh, uh, let's choose this from WMS example. And just to keep, to keep the uh, strings from getting really long in the tabs, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it back down here in the main part of the web page. I like to do that with various servers that I'm using so that the component name is just a simple thing and not fully quite qualified by adding the data source as well. And I'm going to right click on that and choose create uh, new map. And uh, for the base layer, I'm going to add uh, Let's add a Google Maps satellite layer so we can see the uh, satellite uh, uh, imagery, image back, background. C click Create Map, and now I'm going to double click that map open. And you can see here's our uh, WMS display. And in the background, if I turn this off, that's Google Satellite. And I'm using Google Satellite here just for the really the bathymetry display because uh, I think that looks sharp. So if, you, if you're planning a, you know, a, a voyage uh, for the 2045 uh, uh, total eclipse which is going to go flying over the uh, totality going over the uh, Bahamas. You can see exactly, you know, what the water depth is in underground stuff is there. And uh, you can, so you can see all this stuff is, is indeed, it's georeferenced. So that, that's pretty cool. Now coming up with the idea, taking a look at the Google Maps satellite image, uh, that uh, raises another question which we might want to explore. If you look at the main uh, uh, web page here that we used, that, which a server generates automatically, uh, this has a, a lot of controls in it, which the WMS uh, uh, page does not, because WMS is kind of a simpler situation. WMS basically takes whatever is being generated here by default, whichever layers are being turned on and off by default by uh, the zoom ranges or whatever, and uh, that's what it uses in WMS. Other options for turning layers on that are not on otherwise, for example, terrain elevation layer, click apply. and. Uh, so that's a, a 17 gigabyte layer that shows the entire world. I'm going to add country layers to that too, uh, country border layers to that too. Uh, that's uh, that's not on by default, but we can click it on here in, in this display. Uh, suppose we want a, a WMS page, which includes that, because that's not one of the layer, layers that's on by default. Well, that's uh, you know that's using a different site, and uh, the way to do that uh, uh, using a server, it's it's really easy. What I did is I took the project that was um, used to create this uh, Total Eclipse as an IMS site. And I created a version of that project that uses terrain as a background. And uses terrain as a background by default. And I put that in this folder here, IMS9A. So if I use that URL, now we're looking at a version of the project, which server is also service serving in a separate service. So there's two services going on with server. And uh, this now has the, uh, the uh, terrain elevation layer on it uh, as a background layer. And uh, to save space in that second project, I didn't include the countries layer. So if I turn off terrain, you know, the countries uh, are not there. It's just the terrain layer. <clears throat> That's okay. I created this terrain version just to be able to use that with uh, WMS. So how would I use that with WMS? That's easy. Let's uh, highlight that. Click Control C to copy that URL. And now back here on our manifold site, I'm going to turn this map page off so we keep things simple. I'm going to right click here, choose Create new data source, and uh, here I'll call this uh, WMS Terrain example. Type web server WMS, yeah, that's cool. And here in the, in the source, I'm going to add WMS to it. As long as it ends with slash WMS, which is the uh, endpoint for uh, the WMS server, you're okay. You're going to be able to connect to that uh, server. Let's, let's test it anyway. I like to test just to make sure I didn't do any typos. Okay, th so that's all good. Create data source. And now here, uh, I have another map image. Let's uh, also put that in the main part of the uh, web page. So I'm going to click copy and then down here click paste. And I'm going to rename that to uh, map uh, terrain image. All right, now if I open that up, you can see that uh, that's what it shows. This one has a blue background color because uh, the uh, terrain image uh, has, uh, uh, is uh, blue all over because this is one giant image that you're looking at here in, in that project when the train is turned on. And uh, uh, that's like a 17 gigabytes worth of pixels that shows the entire world with a train, uh, including 
uh, the ocean. You know, I, I know this kind of sounds like it's wasting a lot of space, but what the heck, it's manifold. So 17 gigabytes, uh, you know, reacts instantly. And as you zoom in, you can see that it is genuinely showing, you know, the train elevation. Uh, there, there, there it goes for uh, Egypt. And now let's go over here to the United States. And as we zoom into Texas for that super uh, uh, eclipse that's coming up, you can see that the various layers other than the train layer are still turning on and off automatically, for example, to see more towns and to see uh, highways and stuff like that. So all that is working good. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's, that's all you need to know. Now, in this case, like I said, that this particular project is serving one giant image for everything. It's not like a vector image like uh, uh, that we have here in the map. Uh, with the vector image, with the vector image, basically what's going on is that all the stuff in the background is transparent. So you can throw another layer into there, you know, that Google layer, as we did here, and turn that on and off. Let's turn this on and off to, as well, so you can see that Google la layer turning on and off. Uh, here with this map image, uh, that's that's one complete solid image. So if you turn that layer off, there's 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 nothing there that you know you lose that whole image. Uh, you can turn it off in the layers pane, uh, and uh, so. Uh, if you're setting up your projects this way where there's one continuous image through the entire project, well, then you're not going to get any transparent background in between the continents and all that sort of thing. But that's all up to you in terms of how you arrange the projects and how you like to do it. There's a lot of options. It's easy to use. Uh, it's no big deal. But one of the cool things about Server is that it's extremely easy to uh, uh, change the projects that you have set up. And when you change the way you have that project set up, you know, stop the service, change the way the project is, restart the service, it runs again. That changes everything automatically. That changes the... Uh, you know the regular uh, website that server creates right there, and it also changes the uh, you know the WMS uh, stuff that's being served as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video. Uh, if you like it, uh, what you've seen, tell your friends, and a goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.